Welcome back everyone, let's go ahead and talk about one of the most popular phones of last year, which was actually the iPhone SE 2. Now, funny enough, my whole entire channel, you know, last year, even starting in 2018, I think, I was talking about this specific phone along with many other people, and this phone ran the rounds, a ton of people were talking about it, and it had a bunch of hype, and when Apple released it, surprisingly, it was a pretty good phone, it is isn't perfect. And I don't even think it's the best like $400 phone or sub $400 phone, but I really do think it's a solid option if you're trying to get into the Apple ecosystem. This phone is a pretty good priced brand new phone, but a whole year later, surprisingly, this phone really hasn't gone down in value too much. It's still hovering, as far as I can tell, around that $350, still over $300, which is good, you know. But at the same time, for that much money, you can realistically get another phone in the used market that may be better, but we'll get into all that in a second. If you want to pick this phone up or other phones I'd recommend this year, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the front of this specific device, you can see we have that 4.7 inch IPS panel on the front and it's 750p, so it's a little bit above regular HD, but you know, not full HD or anything like that. And it's not an OLED panel either. And that's probably one of the bigger issues with this phone, but I still think it's okay. They recycle the iPhone 8's panel on the same as like body for the most part. So it's really not that big of a deal. Obviously pretty big top and bottom bezels, but I think in this day and age, it's totally okay still. But I think for this next iteration of the iPhone SE 2 Plus or whatever they're going to call it, we're really going to need some bigger improvements in the body type because it's 2021 and we need to get some bigger improvements on these bodies. We have the, you know, Touch ID 2 on the front, which is more important now than ever. I love having that fingerprint sensor. Unfortunately, the new iPhones don't have Touch ID, but this one has it, which is cool. And you have that lightning port on the bottom, still the glass back on the back of it, which looks very, very good. It still looks very nice, still feels extremely premium. And and as I mentioned before, this is not an issue with this phone. This phone still kills it in terms of the feeling. And I really do think for that brand new budget phone feeling, this is one of the best feeling phones for that budget tier device. I think phones like the Galaxy S20 FE, the OnePlus Nord, and the Pixel 4a are great devices and probably better than this thing in some areas. But this phone's feeling in the hand still feels extremely premium. And you have that single camera setup on the back as well. IP certification, wireless charging, the whole nine yards. And this phone for sure at the end of the day still feels and looks extremely good in this day and age. So in terms of the outside, thumbs up for me for sure. Now, hating on probably a really good thing about this phone, which is the camera. For a budget tier phone, I'll definitely tell you, this thing doesn't have the most amount of lenses. It doesn't have the best front-facing camera. But I do think for the majority of things you're going to do with it, it's actually a solid contender for one of the better budget phone cameras. I think it'd probably go for the Galaxy S20 FE, to be honest. But that's not even that big of a budget phone. That's more of like a mid-tier phone, in my opinion. This thing isn't even a budget phone compared to the Pixel 4a. Now, now on the back it has that single 12 megapixel wide angle lens and this camera if you guys remember last year I did those camera comparisons and even towards the end of the year I compared it to the iPhone 12 Pros and this camera the quality of it is still really good. That Apple A13 Bionic chip that this thing has inside of it had some pretty big improvements for the camera lenses as well and I really do think the software optimizations for it really help improve the whole entire camera atmosphere in my opinion but it necessarily you know it's not the best camera out of even all budget phones. I think a phone like the iPhone iPhone 10R potentially may have a better camera. Actually, they're about they're probably about the same. I would definitely say like an iPhone 11 has a better camera than this thing. An iPhone 10s potentially has a better camera than this thing. But like I mentioned before, this thing's camera is still fairly good for the most part. Now the front camera, that 7 megapixel sensor, it's a good camera, but the problem is is that you cannot shoot 4k videos you can't even do 1080p at 60 you can only be tapped out at 1080p at 30 and i think that is kind of a bigger deal than some people may think as you know i have said before i'm somebody who uses the front camera more than the back camera more times than not so if you don't really care about it then go for it. it's not really that big of a deal but it is something for you to kind of be aware of and i noticed last year when i was doing those camera comparisons even now when i use this phone the front camera is one of those areas that i do kind of wish it had a little bit of an improvement on to be completely honest. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up in terms of the camera standpoint. Now hitting on probably I think the best thing and ultimately the worst thing about this phone too, which is the software and the battery life. So first of all, with the software, this phone, the software wise is going to be killing it in, in my opinion. This thing's going to be lasting for an insanely long amount of time. You can pick up this phone right now. You can pick up this phone next year, or even the year after, and it's still going to be getting software support for an insanely long amount of time. To give you some perspective, 
this thing is pretty much going to be lasting as long as the iPhone 11 Pro, the iPhone 11s. So keep that in mind. This phone's going to be lasting for an insanely long amount of time. It's not going to be perfect. You know, it's definitely going to be outdated at some point, but this is probably one of the biggest assets for this specific device. You can get this phone now and it'll be lasting you for many, many years. And it's going to be lasting you longer than a lot of, you know, Android, you know, main phones that are coming out this year. Things like the OnePluses and the Samsungs and all that. This phone could potentially outlast those. So that's a pretty big thing to keep in mind. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers up both the best thing about this phone, in my opinion, and probably one of the worst things, which is the battery life, which I didn't even get into. I totally forgot to. This thing has that 1,821 million power battery inside of it. Now, this is a pretty big low light of this specific device, and the reason for that is because it's just not that big of a size battery. I compared this thing to a lot and a lot of phones. You know, if you look back, I did a bunch of battery comparisons on this phone, and I pretty much saw across the board that this thing, you know, was just not really doing that good of a, a job and that was probably the one of the bigger problems of it. It wasn't even lasting as long as I thought, even compared to, especially compared to the Pixel 4a and a Galaxy S10e and some other of those phones. Those phones were dominating the iPhone SE 2 in my opinion, so that's a pretty big thing to keep in mind. But if you can get over those things, then this phone is probably still a decent phone to pick up, in my opinion, for those things. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers that up. Now, ending it off with the performance, this device, like I mentioned before, has that Apple A13 Bionic chip inside of it with three gigs of RAM. Now, I do think that this RAM on this device is actually a pretty decent thing about this phone. You know, the RAM, I mean, to give you some perspective, this thing has the same amount of RAM as something like an iPhone 10, but on top of that, even if you look at something like an iPhone 12, that thing only has 4 gigs of RAM. So you're still pretty much up there and the speed of this thing is still top tier. I mean, it's not as good of a performing phone as like an iPhone 11 Pro, but it's pretty close. Like it's almost like 90% there in my opinion. It has the same chipset. So theoretically, this thing is going to be able to handle everything you throw at it. The RAM is one of those areas that's going to kind of date it more sooner than later. If you look at things like the iPhone 12 Pro, those phones have six gigs of RAM, so twice the amount of RAM. But as I mentioned before, you don't need the most amount of RAM on devices like this. You can pick this phone as it is right now and still have a ton of RAM left over, you know, for day-to-day -day tasks. If you're somebody who wants to kind of take it, you know, easy and just kind of do light tasks here and there, then I think you're going to be perfect for the most part, even if you're trying to take it up a notch. I mean, dude, I've done so many things on this phone. I've done so many speed comparisons. As I mentioned before, you guys can look over this channel, my second channel, and third channel and see all those speed comparisons and everything and for the most part as I noticed this phone is just such a good performing phone that if it wasn't for the battery this thing would probably be almost like the perfect budget phone for so many people so keep that in mind I definitely don't think the performance is one of those things that you should go and be worried about in my opinion so in terms of performance 100% still a thumbs up it's a great performing phone for sure now to kind of sum up this video and to answer the question is the iPhone SE 2 still worth it in 2021 well Obviously, this phone is still worth it. I think it's a killer phone. It has so much going for it. It has so much capability. And it's just like a no-brainer, in my opinion. I think it's a solid phone. However, I will tell you, like I said in the beginning of this video, just because it's a really good budget phone doesn't necessarily mean it's the best phone for the price. So I think if you were to look at this thing as a brand new offering for $400 and you look at the used market for what you can get for $400, dude, you can get like an iPhone 11 almost for $400 in my opinion. From what I've seen, if I really wanted to and I wanted to negotiate with somebody, I could easily get an iPhone 11. I would even rather have an iPhone 10R than the iPhone SE 2 for a lot of different reasons. I think the front cameras, just the cameras in general are better. You're getting the same amount of RAM. The iPhone SE 2 it may be a little bit faster, but you're getting that newer design and you're getting a much bigger battery life. I feel like the bigger problem with the iPhone SE 2 isn't the performance, it's not even the screen, it's the battery size and a little bit of the camera on the front. Other than that, I think this you know phone is perfect for so many people out there, but I think getting something like an iPhone XR, which you can get for like around 300, probably even less than that. I generally do think you can get like an iPhone XS for like less than 400. You can even get an iPhone 11, I'm sure, if you really negotiated for less than $400 too. So keep that in mind, but that's kind of what I'm thinking with this device. As I mentioned, I think it's extremely good. It's such a capable phone for so many people, but I really do think if you have the opportunity to, maybe not getting the brand new phone, you know, especially the budget phone, if you can, I would recommend getting one of those 
use devices, things like an iPhone XS, a XR, iPhone 11, maybe even an iPhone 10. I probably would stay away from an iPhone 10 if you're looking at an iPhone SE 2 but that's kind of the phones I would recommend in that ballpark. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well, my Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I'll every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.